I'm Adam Laurie, um, sometimes known as RF Idiot and sometimes as Major Malfunction. What's the beh story behind Major Malfunction? Major Malfunction, actually a lot of people think it's from the uh, film Full Metal Jacket. Hmm. Uh, what's your major malfunction? Right. Uh, actually, it's from the um, Challenger shuttle disaster. And if you listen to the, the audio, there's a section where he says, oh. obviously a major malfunction. And, you know, the Challenger's exploded and there's bits all over the sky. And I just thought this was a really strange kind of understatement. Mm. And this is how I felt about the entire security right. industry at the right. time, that there was a lot of crap going on right. um, and people were understating the problem. So I thought it was kind of a funny pun to use. Right. It's um, a very strong imagery, so I, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. And it stuck, Fair you know, enough. I yeah. used it in a chat room and it stuck. So, right. Uh, right. okay. So um, you're running the hard pawn contest at Hardware. I'm helping it. I'm not yeah. running right, it. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, you're one yeah. of the people helping out yeah. over there. Can you tell me more about the contest? So basically, um, it's like a, that there's a few competitions around the world doing this kind of stuff, and there's lots of bug bounties and so on. But generally, you have to pre-prepare for it. You mm -hmm. know, you, you go to the website and you figure out... Um, what your target device is mm. and and the basic thing you're doing is is taking a device and trying to break into it find vulnerabilities right. and then responsibly disclose them right. the difference with um, hardpoon is uh, anyone can show up there's no preparation required before we're providing not just the targets but also the tools so we have all the equipment you mm. might need to break it sitting at the desk and people who know how to use it so mm. You know, if you've got an idea, I, you know, I, I want to do this, but I don't know how to work the chip whisperer or I don't know how to work the Soleil um, logic analyzer. Right. We're there to help you because we know how to use those tools. So we're not right. telling you how to do the hack, but we help you to use the tools efficiently right. and understand, you know, what you need to solder or help you with soldering and mm. stuff like that. Mm. So anyone can rock up and have a go and, right. and we help them. What are some of the target devices uh, at the booth? Um, there's the, the Nest uh, alarm system, um, thermostats, there's some padlocks, um, some home security thing. Right. There's a bunch of different stuff. Yeah. And from what I understand, the vendors have provided it. Yeah, so the vendors, this is done with the full cooperation of the vendors. Um, right. It's going through the uh, Zero Copter Disclosure Program. Okay. So they're, okay. they're managing the disclosure and the bounties and mm -hmm. so on. Um, and in fact, you even have the manufacturers sitting there. Right. Um, so if you have questions for them, you can, or, or you find something really major, they, you can go off in a corner and in a huddle and have a conversation with them. Interesting. Um, Interesting. Yeah, and, and in fact, you know, my own, uh, I brought a tool, right. which is a prototype. Yes. Um, and I'm interested in sniffing, um, not Zigbee, but I mean, everyone's a lot of IoT stuff is doing radio hmm. uh, and a lot of it's using Zigbee. Um, but there's also other protocols which are being used instead. So Zigbee sits under 802.15.4. Right. But you could do other packet structures within that radio um, hmm. phi. So some people are doing that. And in fact, uh, Nest are using a, another standard called Thread. And then they've created their own thing on top of that called Weave. Hmm which they've open sourced. So you can go and download the full stack. Right. Um, but my tools, you know, are designed to plug into more commonly used kind of hacking tools like Wireshark and Killer Bee and right. so on, and Scapey. But there are no decoders for, for Thread or, uh, well, Thread is in Wireshark, but there's no decoders for, for Weave, for example. Sure. So I just said to the Nest guys, uh, how do I look at Weave? And they're like, oh, there's no decoder. Okay, we'll write that for you. <laughs> so, you know, we'll create a plugin and we'll... Right. So that kind of interaction with the manufacturer is is priceless. You know, it's, it would right. be really hard for me as a researcher. Yeah, yeah. I would have to spend a month writing that decoder. Mm. But their guys who actually wrote the protocol in the first place could probably knock it out in a day. Right. But And they see the value of doing that because they're putting it back into the community mm. Mm. so that everyone like me can just pick it up and use it and help them to improve the product. So, right. you know, it's a win-win.
So this kind of collaboration was unimaginable some 10 years ago. Do you yeah. think yeah, yeah. it's the economics that's driving or the, it was inevitable or <laughs> what? <laughs> I think it's a bit of both. I mean, people mm. see, um, it's very easy to think uh, that it's going to be bad for your business. Right. But actually in practice, what we see is right. it's probably the other way around. They mm. say, you know, well, I have mixed feelings about the whole bug bounty thing. Okay. Um, because you can do a lot of work and get nothing for it. Right. Right. So people who depend on being paid to do research and to do um, vulnerability, uh, you know, um, discovery and so on, right. uh, it can potentially affect your your income, and mm. you can spend a lot of time mm. for nothing. But on the other hand, as a vendor, you know, right. it must look very attractive because you have thousands of people potentially looking at your device. Mm. And you only have to pay the guy that actually finds the vulnerability. Right. right. So um, I, I, I don't really understand why any companies thought that was a bad idea, right. to be honest. I right. mean, when you look at the math, it's pretty obvious that yeah. it's a win yeah. for the company. Yeah. Um, right. But um, the amount of sharing that's done it, it would have been unthinkable, yeah, mm. 10 years ago, because yeah. the mentality just wasn't there. And the hardware world is that much behind. The software world, you know, the software has been doing open source and, and full disclosure mm. um, for, you know, five, six, seven, whatever years um, at this kind of level. And now hardware is catching up. And, mm. and uh, that's why I really like this conference, because it's one of the, the drivers for that. So, yeah. Right. That's a good segue for my next question. Okay. So you've <laughs> seen the progression of hardware at I.O. Yeah. as well. Yeah. How, what's your impressions? What are the things that you like about the conference? What can improve further? Um, I like the direction it's going in, the fact that it's getting more and more collaboration from the manufacturers. Right. I think Hardpone is a great development. It's, um, it's a new thing. I haven't seen it done anywhere else. Mm. Um, there are other competitions, like I say, but normally there's a much more strict process for how you participate. Right. Um, and this is really open and inclusive and easy to, to do. Um, right. There's always very good talks here. People are bringing, people are starting to, to bring um, new and really interesting stuff. And mm. again, it's very open. You know, there's not, um, there's not this thing, well, we, we found this thing, but we can't really talk about it. When you go to the talks, mm. you get the full detail. It's like, okay, this is how you do it. <laughs> and so right. we learn a lot every time. Everyone who comes here, all the speakers learn from each other as well as the, the um, the attendees. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's going in the right direction. Excellent. So I have one final question. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite memory from all the hardware I.O. conferences <laughs> you've attended? It could be an inappropriate memory. Okay. Um, well, there's one that happens at every uh, event and it involves monks. <laughs> the old one? The old monk, there you go. <laughs> so that's what I look forward to every year. <laughs> You're going to make the Indians really happy. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, Adam. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.